the lighthouse is possibly the most immersive experience I've ever had watching a film, and even after countless rewatches, I still find myself in awe every single time. Blaschke just created this mystical atmosphere that, whilst gruelling, is completely representative of the story. In today's video, I'm going to be covering the equipment Blaschke used, the orthochromatic look, his use of lighting and shadows, as well as how he utilised the 1.19 to 1 aspect ratio. Now, this isn't your average period drama or thriller. I mean, like most others, it was able to be shot on film, but that's about where the comparisons end, as Blaschke had no intention of going the easy route. In fact, out of all of the equipment on the film, the camera was the most modern, it being the Panavision Panaflex Millennium XL2, which was released in 2004. Now, it is the most modern film camera Panavision have to offer, but still. As for the lenses, Blaschke went old, really old. So old, in fact, that he had lenses that originated in the 1840s, those being the Petvul lenses. And out of these three sets of lenses that he used on the film, these were the most unusual. That is to say, they have a very defined look. The most distinct aspect being that swirly bokeh that gets very heavy towards the edges. The next lens was a 50mm Path Goers triplet lens, which again seems to be from the 1800s, however I'm getting contradicting statements, but it originated sometime between 1895 and 1904. Now all I can tell from Blaschke's interviews is that his version was made in 1905 and was rehoused, uncoated and detuned. The last set of lenses are probably his favourite though, and these were the Borsch and Lom Boltars. They're the most beautiful portrait lenses I'd ever seen. Highlights with glow, distinct but they weren't too heavy handed. It wasn't gauzy, they had a shimmering quality that really took me somewhere else. I fell in love with them. As for the stock, it had to be a black and white stock of sorts, and where else do you go than Eastman's XX5222. Now, he did tests on 5219, which is a colour stock, and the Alexa, but the X just couldn't be topped. Our assumptions were upheld. In addition to much larger grain, the X had more tooth. Even if you match the overall contrast in the DI, the X had more local or micro contrast, which emphasises texture and better differentiates similar tones. Before I start on the rest of the video, I need to talk about the specific look that Blaschke was after, known as the orthochromatic look, which in simple terms is a look devoid of red, so anything red in an image turns black, hence the reasons that their faces look so much more rough than what we are used to. I wanted to emphasise texture, make them look as rough as possible. I have to say Willem has some very good skin, but it even works on him. Now, in order to do this, Blaschke had to eliminate any red going into the camera, which is much easier said than done. First, he looked at getting blue or blue-green filters, but as they eliminate a lot of peripheral light, it was out of the question. Then he was introduced to Schneider, and they made a custom filter for the film, and the production didn't even have to pay for it, Panavision did. I eventually came to understand that it was classically black and white, not a colour movie desaturated. It's dark with high contrast, all of the lighting is optimised for black and white, it's an unapologetically black and white movie. Now I think we need to split the lighting into two parts, that being the interiors and the exteriors, which may sound obvious but in general the lighting style doesn't usually change. Sure, exteriors are on average more high key and broad, but that's about as far as it goes. In this however, I'm finding the styles to almost contradict each other. Interiors are low key, the shadows are sharp, and it feels almost supernatural in parts. I mean, yes, it has this element of realism, but the way in which the light falls and how Blaschke has played with shadows really makes me think of something almost mystical. Now, the exterior scenes almost feel contradictory. They're cleaner, in some parts, and nowhere near as dark, the shadows are less prominent, if they are even there at all, and the lighting is very natural, organic. However, outside we are exposed to the elements, and this allows us to feel fully immersed when the weather takes a turn for the worse, or better. To look at it from a more theory-based perspective, however, we could suggest that the darker, more low-key interiors bring out the worst in Wake. Now, that's not to say that he's an amazing guy outside, but whenever he's shown in this environment, surrounded by shadows, we feel more scared for Winslow. Or is it Howard? 
Now, as the film was shot using low sensitivity stock, Glaschke had to use 8 and 9K HMIs as well as M90s and 18Ks throughout, as the natural light would be nowhere near enough. He would then bounce them off muslins for a softer glow. As for the nighttime, he opted for low voltage bulbs and trina lights, and even though this is minimal lighting, as he was shooting at 50 ASA, it was extremely bright on set. So, to address the elephant in the room, this is quite a unique aspect ratio. So unique in fact, that the last time it was widely used on a production of this scale was back in the 1930s on films like Vampire or City Lights. I said to Rob offhand that if we really wanted to confine it, we should shoot in 1.19. It wasn't necessarily serious, but he really took to it. The choice to shoot in this aspect ratio is actually quite an interesting one, as every other film like this has either been shot in 1.37 to 1 or 1.66 to 1. Now we can rule out 1.66 to 1 being used here as it just wouldn't have been right. I don't know how to explain it, but it just wouldn't. However, not using 1.37 to 1 is weird as it's so much more common, although that could also be the reason as to why they didn't use it. However, Blaschke puts it best as, it frames the vertical lighthouse even better, isolates our two characters even more, and truly traps them together when they do share a frame. This film is more of a close-up movie than The Witch, and 1.19 simplifies and focuses on those details in a beautifully direct way. As for the composition, you already know where I'm going with this. Everything pretty much happens in the centre of the frame, and let's be honest, you've heard it all before. It shows immersion in an environment, creates power, duality, can be used for impact, but this explanation gets boring after a while, and also Blaschke probably also did it for another reason on top of those, as it's pretty hard to create a balanced frame when your frame is in a square, especially when you only have one character in the shot. However, what's much more interesting to look at is the other shots, where we have both Wake and Winslow. For example, here, where Wake is larger in the frame and he has more power in the frame. At this point in the film, he knows more and is therefore much stronger in a sense than Winslow. But then there's this kind of switch later on in the film. Winslow is now bigger, and yes, Pattinson is taller than Defoe, but he's also closer to the camera. He's now the more dominant figure, well, in a size way. I mean, throughout the film they go back and forth on who's the more powerful, and the way in which it's displayed is through their placement. Is one bigger than the other? Does one have a frame to themselves? Are we looking up or down? The general rules still apply, but it just seems a bit more peculiar because we are watching the film in this aspect ratio. Why just spill your beans, Tommy? So overall, Blaschke has not only managed to create a dark and desolate atmosphere, but he's also managed to make it unlike any other film in this genre. He's used an aspect ratio that hasn't been seen in almost 100 years, went after an orthochromatic look that is authentic to the story, used lenses that are older than cinema itself, and basically made every frame look like a painting. I seriously can't wait to do The Northman. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video, not to do if you did, if you have a recommendation for an analysis, leave it down below. Thank you so much for watching, and maybe I'll see you next time. Bye! Hulk! Hulk! Triton!